Hi everybody, welcome back to Embrace the Journey with Sharon. And today my guest is Sherry Nadelman. She is a singer, a songwriter. Uh, she plays in a Sarasota-based band called Solar Coaster, which I want to find out more about the name of that. The reason that she's here today is to share her journey. Um, this isn't what she always did. And at some point in her life, something happened and she actually gave herself permission to follow her dream. And now we all here have been blessed by her amazing voice and her amazing talents. So the intention behind today's show is for you to just share who you were and what allowed you to give yourself permission because there's a lot of people out in this world who have dreams that they've buried them. They've buried them by, you know, people telling them they can't do it, by doing the nine to five job that they're miserable at, mm -hmm. by being in a relationship with somebody that doesn't support them, all of those things. And you, my dear, mm -hmm. I've had the privilege of spending some time with you and I think your story is absolutely amazing oh. and I think it will inspire others. So oh. thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You're very kind. Mm -hmm. I don't think that it's I don't think that I'm that unusual in, in that respect. I think that there are so many women at this stage of the game who have gone through similar circumstances. I think that I morphed into who I am and I'm, and I'm still ever changing, if you will. Um, and I don't think it's an accident. I, I, I believe that wherever we are at this point of our lives, is where we were supposed to be, mm -hmm. and the universe kind of made us. But you have to have the courage to give yourself the permission. And and I love mm -hmm. Sherry starts her shows with saying, uh, "Welcome to my midlife crisis." <laughs> well, I used to do that. I, I, yeah. If I'm playing solo, I do that. The guys in my band, not so much, but yeah, I know, right? It's yeah. like welcome to my midlife crisis. It's and like what, and how do we define that? We, right? Well, you know, I'm fronting a rock band, and I'm like I'm years old, and it's like it's, you know, doesn't I mean, look it. Whatever that is. Oh no, I don't mind telling you. I, it, it, yeah, I, way back in the day, I, this is all. This is what I've always wanted to do my whole life, and I know that you've heard it before. And I think that if you ask most any singer here in town or anywhere, we'll, we will all have that in common. With, so take us know. back. Take us back on your journey. My journey started back in Brooklyn, New York. I know, hard to believe I'm from Brooklyn. Don't get me but Clem, I'll start out. I don't need a paper bag. I, I was born in Brooklyn. I always wanted to sing. I think I came out singing. I, I make a little joke, but it's not, it's not so much of a joke, that when I was a kid, I would, I would literally sing myself to sleep to the point where I thought my middle name was Shut Up, because mm. I used to hear, Sherry, shut up, mm. a lot, a lot. Um, Did you get it in the car, too? Like, if you're taking a family trip, and you're singing at the top of your lungs, and the family turns around and says, be quiet. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. oh yeah, oh yeah. Singing with the hairbrush in my house mm. and singing myself to sleep and I would pretend that I was on a stage and the whole nine yards, absolutely. Um, I, I started playing guitar when I was 12. We couldn't afford a piano. My father got me a, a guitar. I think somebody had given it to him. I started learning how to play by ear. A friend of mine showed me some chords and I just and it just took off. So I knew that I wanted to sing forever. One of our, a friend of my grandparents was a very, very, very well-known uh, 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 vocal coach in New York City mm -hmm. my whole life. All I wanted to do was go and have him hear me. Um, long story short, I, I would sing for anybody who'd listen and by the time I was a teenager, I remember taking a guitar class in, in, in high school and true story that the, the I needed an extra credit to graduate, and so it just took whatever course I needed to fill that. And um, I remember I would be in the beginning of the class before the teacher would come in with the rest of the class singing Neil Young songs <laughs> until the, and finally he got wind of what was going on. He said, "Listen, do me a favor. Um, I'll give you an A. Please don't come back to the class." I mean, I couldn't. Yeah, I was. It was. It was a a good thing, but not so much when yeah. I think back to it. Um, but that kind of because how did that thing, feel? It didn't feel great, but it it made it was twofold because it made me feel like I was, I uh, like I I was, I had something, mm -hmm. and I was I was definitely um, 
but not supported better, but not supported at all and that kind of was a, a thread through my life yeah and um, because those outside voices a lot of times can be a lot stronger than the internal one if we allow it yeah no pun intended yeah for real oh yeah. I know it absolutely. is all allowing oh absolutely um, my family God rest their soul was were not supportive mm -hmm. they would uh, tease me oh this you know just Sherry singing or whatever and so getting back to this voice coach I always wanted to see him and and actually find out if I had anything that was the big thing it was like every time I sang for whomever would hear me they would tell me that I had a good voice I didn't you know and I was a, a chubby kid from Brooklyn and you know what did I know and and all I wanted to do was you know find out if I actually had something that uh, that was worth pursuing and back in the day you know, you didn't have American Idol and X Factor and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You just kind of, you had to, you know, fun for through and make your own way in the world. It wasn't until I was already, uh, I think I was in college, and I finally got up the nerve to go and see him myself. My parents would kind of poo-poo, going, yeah, we'll, oh, we'll take you one day. And every time I would see Marty at at um, functions, come and see me, make a, make an appointment, come to my studio. And so finally, I think I was 19 or 20 years old, and I, find, I was 19, and, I, and I, made a, I made the courage phone call. Yeah. And I said I needed to go and hear him. And the deciding factor for that was I was on a trip with a bunch of friends up to Vermont, took my guitar with me, singing in the, on the bus ride, which is most fun, on the way there. And uh, at the end of the trip, everybody was asking where I was performing because we'd like to come see you. And I thought I really need, you know, and I wouldn't take it a step further until I, yeah. I got that. So you weren't performing at no, that time. No, you were just playing, like you said, Absolutely. for whoever would hear you, yeah. and for yourself right. at that point. It sounds like right, and it's almost like I needed, I needed validation yeah. before I would take it any further. So finally, I did get up the nerve, and I went to see him, and and uh, and he heard me, and he said to me, I w and I'll never forget it. He said, I, I, I think you have something I'd like to work with you. And to, that was like Simon Cowell saying, you're going to Hollywood, mm. literally. And so by the time I got home to Brooklyn, I was still living at home with my folks, there was a little star on my bedroom door and then everybody was on board. And so um, that kind of mushroom, <laughs> oh, yeah, it, cool. was, it, was, it was a big, a big ch you know, Turn yeah. of the events at home. Yeah, because yeah. like you said, you you your parent, you you know, family loves you in their own way, mm -hmm. but they, we do feel it. We do feel when we're not fully supported in something, and most of the times now, for me, I've learned that it real what they're giving me, their emotions or whatever support they can, really has nothing to do with me and my dreams. It's them. Absolutely. They maybe they didn't follow their dreams. Right. Maybe they. Uh, fell forward right. and, and didn't get back up and, and keep going with it. And, and so that's all they knew how to give you. Right, and that, and that of course, sets our <clears throat> limitations, yeah. or so we think. Our beliefs. Yep. Without a doubt. Yep. And so it wasn't until I got that okay from a voice coach who yeah. was somebody, right. until I knew that you admired. I could, yes, yeah. and they did too. And then they realized, oh wait, maybe our kid really does have something. Mm. It wasn't long after that that there were a couple of auditions and then I was going to cut a record. I had a manager and a producer and my mom was so on board, it was so funny. It was She did such a 180 and then um, it didn't come to fruition and I, I it was all a, a financial mm -hmm. uh, mess and so the money wasn't there. We were supposed to cut the record, it never happened, and I was devastated and basically was back to square one and just kind of put everything back, you know, on a back burner. Now, and was it a shutdown? Because yeah, absolutely. That is, that's just what we were just talking about, somebody following their dreams and what I call falling forward, mm -hmm. because we, we do. Most of the times you, you fall forward, but we don't look at it that way because society tells us you failed, uh, you didn't, you know. And so a lot of times it's, it is such a big impactful thing, especially if it's a personal dream. Uh, it's hard to get back up. Of course, and especially when you're dealing with other factors as well. Um, you, struggling with weight was an issue mm -hmm. and getting, you know, getting my life on track with that. Uh, you know, how could I ever, think about you know getting to show business I mean that was like you know Brooklyn is was my little safe bubble and then you know you you'd have to make that trip into Manhattan almost like that 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 uh, you know what's his name's character in, in uh, 
Saturday Night Fever, where he goes over, you know, yeah, taking yeah, that trip over the, the bridge. There's a lot to say. Lot, there's a lot to be said. Yeah. Um, yeah. However, when you have a passion, it doesn't go away, mm -hmm. as is the case with me and many other people. I, I never stopped singing. I met, I met a guy, and we, uh, my life took a different path, and I put the career on hold and you know followed my husband at the time and basically you know did the wife and mother thing all the while singing for whomever would listen I would break out my guitar all the time I would volunteer for things uh, I, I was a, an assistant preschool teacher in New Jersey at one point and um, oh man I do a mean wheels on the bus I'm just yeah. saying, <laughs> just saying. It was great. It was great playing for uh, you know, an audience of four-year-olds. Yeah. They were my best audience. It was great. Yeah. So I, I you know, pursued this all, all through my life and uh, continued singing and at least you know, had that. So let me ask you this, because mm -hmm. I, I think uh, for many of us, I know I'm going to speak for myself, <clears throat> when we have a dream and somebody else comes into our life, you know, we, we, I think we're here to be in relationships. and, but. Was there any like like a, a little red flag for you at that time that you didn't listen to, that you didn't that you pushed aside? It's a great question. I it's a great. I don't even know how to answer that. I'll do my best. Um, I never thought I was good enough, and it wasn't until the validation of everybody else and realizing that I am good enough and I didn't need the husband I didn't need the family to mm -hmm. tell me that whether they felt it or not um, my ex and I obviously um, we parted ways amicably by the way uh, it was an issue I also knew that if I went full force with a career in show business, it was going to really have a negative effect on my relationship, and that's something you have to learn how to balance as well. Mm -hmm. um, at the risk of, I don't, I don't want to put anybody else down or diss anybody in my life who who wasn't supportive. I'll just leave it at that. I'll just say that um, the support came from within. Yeah. It did. It took me a very long time to have find the strength in myself to go for it. Rekind rekindle that, the fire. Because I always, I always say that we're 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 all born with a book of matches inside mm -hmm. of us. I believe. Oh, I like that. And some people's smolder their entire lives and they don't spark it. And some people spark it and one starts to burn and something happens in our lives, a circumstance or somebody comes along and it, it's lit, but it's dim. It's just kind of slowly burning down there. That's the passion that, that I feel anyway. And for myself, I can say that when I haven't listened to that internal part of myself, and I get the value and the worth thing, you've got to watch my video on that because we're, we're kinship in that. And I think many, many women, I don't know as much for men, but I know many women uh, have that feeling in their lives. Yeah. That, that if we don't, uh, that, that if we allow these outside circumstances, again, it's almost, I always say, I feel like I'm uh, dying inside. Oh. Of course. Yeah, dying inside. Absolutely. But Absolutely. when you follow it, that flame comes up again and... Absolutely. So Which you, is, you reflamed it, you, you, you know, put some air in there and... It never, it, I never, I never put, put it down. I never put my guitar down and, and, and just walked away from it mm -hmm. ever. And I've always written, and I've always I've written short stories, and I've been published, and it's you know part of my my creative self, mm -hmm. and that's never that's never gone away. That's always been there, but it wasn't until I was um, in the midst of my separation, my first husband, that 
a, a good friend of mine urged me to do an open mic night, and that was it. Mm. I went up on that stage and just n never looked back, mm. basically. And and one thing led to another, and it's you know it took me a few years to you know hone my craft, as they say, get my feet wet, get a, you know make a little name for myself and. And uh, and people started to listen, and people started to come to my shows, and yeah. I started playing with other musicians, and it grew into um, a force to be reckoned with. I think. Yeah. And I think so, that yeah. the the when we discovered that the gifts that we have, which you you have many, but this is one of your um, the essence of who you are. When I met you and when I'm around you and with other people around you, there's an essence about your voice and your singing and the messages that come through and the music oh, and the lyrics kind. to your songs. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, when we finally gift it as a service to others, it, that's when it comes back. Being a songwriter, I consider myself a storyteller. Mm -hmm. And I know that from having friends who are authors and people that I've met throughout my life, the one, the one thread that they share is that they've, their advice was always write what you know. I, in fact, I, I just said that the other night. I was talking to someone about the very same thing. Write about what you know, yeah. which is what I do, and I did. And so um, I, I like to capture a little piece of who I am in what I write, and I hope that it gets out there. It's a real personal. It's your experience. Without a life. doubt. And yeah. then, you know. Your perspective. Right. It, more so than, you know, getting out. I mean, any singer will tell you that they put their heart and soul into their performance. So couple that with writing about a piece of your life, and then putting it out there it's 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 huge and and it's it's empowering and it's um to me it's magic it's, it's, i it's, think it's one of the most vulnerable things and vulnerable oh, things uh, vulnerable states that you can put yourself in because you're basically saying here's my heart right and Unfortunately, we know there are people that embrace that, and right. then there's always going to be some. There's always a critic. There's a critic around every corner, and oh my gosh. and that is something that we have to uh, find the courage to look past. Because whether you're up or down, people are going to have something to say. Oh my gosh! And and those of us who suffer from the, oh my God, what do they think of me? The worth, the value. Without a doubt. Yeah. 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 I constantly worry. I worry about what I mean. Like every, I I, I think I don't know. You know, do I? How do I look? Is my hair alright? Do I? How do I sound okay? It's like, oh my God, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna, so it's when, when you, yeah, without a doubt, you're always worrying what people are thinking of you, and it, and and I finally got the courage to not worry about that. Yeah, we and when I, we talked yeah. about it earlier. Right. I say worrying is praying for what you right. don't want. Yeah. So focus on what it is that you do want. So share a little bit because yes, she did follow <laughs> the dream and create this, and I love the name of it. Um, fate steps in. Mm -hmm. I love it. Uh -huh. So share a little bit about this and um, well, getting um, to that part of the journey. Sure. I can tell you that I've written a bunch of songs and decided that I was going to go ahead and, um, and, and produce them and record them. And with the help of the man in my life who I'm married to, Art Nailman, who is beyond what I could have ever hoped for in a partner in terms of having a support system. Yeah. When he walked into my life, he not, only, he, he not only took my heart to the next level, he took my talent to the next level. I wish everybody could find somebody like him. Mm -hmm. um, that was, I think, again, no accident. Did it feel like um, you were finally seen by somebody? I felt like I was finally seen and I finally appreciated. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. I, yes, the absolutely. word that I like to use is intimacy. Yeah. Into me see. You sound like, um, a, a, you know, that Avatar movie. Have you seen it? When, when their, their, their um, catchphrase, I think, is, I see you. Yeah. And it's like, and I, 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 I don't know why, but that touched me. And that's what I'm getting right now. Yes, yeah. I see you. It's like that whole 
you know, inner feeling of, of relating to somebody on that level without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, it's like oh somebody gosh, wraps yeah. in and embraces yeah. you. Right, right. All of you. Right. You know, but, all uh, of us, right. because we're not, we, we have gifts, but we're not perfect, yeah. and we have flaws, and we have wounds, and we have all of that stuff and that here comes it, with and it. And here it is. Yeah. Here it is, and it's like, you know, take it or leave it. If you take it, that's great. And if you leave it, that's okay too. And he took it. He took it, and he. You know, like, oh, <laughs> God bless him, because you know, I mean, living with me. No, he he's been great, and he also he has a background in music and technical stuff, and he he uh, he's our sound man, and and just you know keeps me grounded. Well, maybe it was the universal timing because maybe you needed those experiences from the first time that you uh, were thought you were going to do it till the time where you created it so that you had the right words to share, the right lyrics, the right songs to to yeah. give the world with. Well, I would like to think so. I just knew there was time for me yeah. to to do this and and he encouraged me to do it. I could never have done it without that, without a doubt. I was lucky enough to have a lot of um, wonderful connections and friends in, in music here in Sarasota and uh, worked with some amazing musicians. And so when I brought the, the raw music to Bud Snyder, who was a very well-known and well-respected uh, engineer and producer, he, uh, he helped to uh, hone all of my songs into what they are now. And um, I'd like to say that my the style my style is really hard to describe because I'm a little bit of everything, mm -hmm. and so the the album kind of has uh, a lot of different genres. Who inspires you? If you had three uh, three people that you would say inspire your your sound or uh, how you express yourself, is there three people that you could? Well, I'm a rabid Sheryl Crow fan. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you, without a doubt, um, absolutely. And, uh, you know, all the girl singers from back there, you know, back in, in my time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I get compared to, to That's a to quote Pappy. from my yearbook. That's very funny. I don't give a damn about my bad reputation. you got to understand. It's a new generation. That was my quote from my yearbook. Okay, so you know. You oh, know. yeah. So, yeah, Pat Benatar <clears throat> and Cindy Lauper and Cher, and yeah. those are the women that I... Strong I women. Know, strong women and strong, strong women voices. Who follow, yeah, yeah, who, you know, stepped yeah. out in, yeah. in a time where, you know, uh, right. women were stepping out. Yeah. So. And and music uh, writing my music, I would also say Dave Matthews is a is very a, cool. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. Well, I so enjoy having you here. Uh -huh. And if you could leave, if if we could leave people with three uh, golden nuggets of advice that you would put out there for somebody that's looking to follow their dream, just like three simple words or short sentences. Do you have anything that you want to share related to that? Don't give up. Ever. That's it. Don't give up. Yeah. yeah. And there's rock and roll after 50. Yeah, there Thank you go. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I like to end the show with saying um, embrace the journey because when you do, life becomes amazing. And I think uh, having Sherry on today is a perfect uh, example of that. Um, so again, I thank you so very much and look for the preview because this girl is going to rock out for us <laughs> and we will have that up on the website. We'll also have information on the website of how you can reach her if you're looking to book an amazing band or amazing singer and that CD that was up and coming for a long time, it's out there and yeah. we'll have the information so that you can go and, and purchase that. Thanks. It's fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. You're very Thanks welcome. Thanks so much for having me. It's oh, my pleasure. Mine Seriously. too. Mine too. Thanks. Bye.